Our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Patricia from Canada, go ahead. Uh, two Wednesday meetings ago, I started to tell of visiting my senior friend Lydia, who was starving, but she kept throwing food out because she imagined she was seeing maggots crawling on her food. When Christian science was explained to her, she started to eat, gain weight, and quit thinking that she saw maggots. But her only relative forced her to go to a hospital although she felt great progress and wanted to rely on Christian science. So now I'll continue the story here. In my first visit to the hospital, I saw that Lydia's health had suddenly gone downhill and she was terribly frightened. Her hands, arms, and body were now severely shaking nonstop. Her physician gave her no hope of a remedy and she didn't mention the name of the diagnosis. But I remembered that my mother, a medical nurse, had once pointed out a similar condition to me and called it a type of motor ataxia related to brain damage. But matter, brain, is not cause. The divine mind, with a capital M, is cause and knows only perfection. Lydia and I chatted for about half an hour, and then I told her that I needed quiet time to pray. So I prayed, although her shaking made a distracting noise. In that noisy hospital, all I could think about was the Lord's Prayer. It was the first time for me to consider it word by word, trying to think and understand what it meant. The first word, our became so wonderful and precious to me that it took a long time to get past even that one word. Our, common to all, shared, everyone's ownership, belonging, united, oneness, all blessed, family, equal position, inheritance, community, symphony, no separation between God and man, and on and on it went, a discovery, a cherishing. Even the word the became spiritually power-packed with meaning. Even before I finished the prayer, I opened my eyes to see that the shaking had stopped completely and it never returned. Once when my husband visited Lydia, she begged him to go to the head of the hospital and tell them to stop drugging her. She said, that medicine makes me feel like I'm bouncing off the walls. It's not helping. And they don't listen to me. I want out of this hospital. The head doctor visited and said he would only release her once she could walk 10 laps of the corridor. Knowing that Lydia didn't want the medical treatment, my husband, at Lydia's request, took up prayerful treatment for her and I was so pleased to witness that she became strong enough in about a week to walk those 10 laps and joyfully return home. My thanks to God for giving us Jesus Lord's Prayer and his many teachings and Mary Baker Eddy's scientific goal of reinstating primitive Christianity and its lost element of healing. And my thanks to our Plainfield Church for energetically promoting their teaching. Good evening. Thank you. Jeremy. <clears throat> I'm so grateful for this church and for all that I am learning here about practical Christian science. Thank you for tonight's readings and for everything this church provides. My gratitude tonight is for the joy that this work brings and for my practitioner working with me over the years to make sure I am able to catch myself if the aggressive suggestion comes that I am losing my joy. I had the, uh, such an experience yesterday where after a few days of doing technical work 
which sometimes is necessary, but truthfully, it's not as joy-filled for me as some of the other stuff I do is, I found myself losing that regular enthusiasm I have for what I do. But I felt that this time, I was able to see it come on right away and immediately get to work to shutting it down. And of course, since I absolutely love working for this church and love everything I get to do, even the process of reminding myself felt like listing the ways that God blesses me each day. I'm so grateful to say my joy did not diminish all that much, and at this moment I feel as joyful and enthusiastic about this life God has given me as I ever have been. I'm very grateful for my practitioner for teaching me how to stay on top of this kind of thing, and grateful to Christian Science for being true and useful in all parts of my life. Thank you. And now we have a testimony from Imogen in Australia. Tonight I would like to share my deepest thanks for Christian Science and for the holy prayer of my beautiful practitioner at this church. A while ago I was having a rather average day. I didn't feel very joyous and a sense of sorrow grew within a sadness at the perceived hateful state of world affairs. In such darkness I wondered how just one little light could make any difference. In a parallel way I noticed also some painful physical symptoms. Well, the physical symptoms of pain persisted, as my thought persisted, caught in this wrongful and downward sense of mankind. I realized that I really did need some prayerful help in Christian science. At the time, I couldn't use my phone to call, so I emailed my dear practitioner at this church and humbly asked her to pray for me. Around ten minutes after emailing her, I felt the most sublime sense of divine love and light uplifting me. This love filled my heart and soul, filled my thoughts, filled the very room I was in, and all sense of sorrow and pain just melted away. The thought came that I was not just one little light. I was in the kingdom of light. I knew that such rapid improvement must be the result of the holy prayer of my practitioner. So I quickly typed off a second email to say that I felt so very much incredibly improved, sadness wiped all away, and all physical symptoms vanished. And I thanked my dear practitioner for her prayer, because I was absolutely certain that she had been praying for me during these moments of struggle. Well, I laughed to see an email come immediately back from her confirming that, yes, she had indeed been praying for me since she received my first email and that she had been, quote, wrapping me up in the love of God. Isn't that just beautiful? That was exactly how I felt. The love of God that cleaves the soul and announces in one's very being that God is here. Undeniable, beautiful, divine. This holy prayer felt here in Australia all the way from Plainfield again confirms the statement written by our dear leader, Mary Baker Eddy, quote, The still small voice of scientific thought reaches over continent and ocean to the globe's remotest bound, end quote. I am very grateful for Christian science, to Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy. I am very grateful for the blessed Holy Prayer given by a practitioner in this church that healed my soul 
and physical distress that day. I am very grateful to our loving Father, Mother God for keeping us, his children, always so safe in the kingdom of his love. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the music. I want to express my gratitude tonight for a recent healing. I was having sensitivity in uh, my gums. It was very uncomfortable uh, when I ate and brushed my teeth. And when I chewed in one area of my mouth, it hurt. And I was seeing a few changes in my uh, mouth with the gums and with and felt it with my teeth. So I spoke to my Plainfield practitioner. She had me work with the scientific statement of being, and we also talked about making sure I was keeping my peace. During this time, uh, during our roundtable classes, we were getting instruction on working daily with the scientific statement of being, which can be found in Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy on page 468. It was even mentioned to work with it while brushing your teeth. So I took this up. It made me more aware of not mindlessly going through tasks. I also had posted in my cabinet in the bathroom a past calendar statement that said, quote, Note definitely and forcefully each day that God good is everywhere. End quote. And that's Ian Walt. During the day, when I thought of my teeth, I would remind myself that my teeth were rooted and grounded in love, something that's taught here, and I would make sure that I felt what it meant. I started seeing improvements in my mouth, and the painful chewing left, and I was able to chew, uh, brush my teeth without the discomfort. I recently went to the dentist and had a cleaning and x-rays and was told my mouth and teeth were in very good shape. During this time, while I was visiting at the dentist, I continued to work with the scientific statement of being and radiating love and watching my thought, also turning to the 23rd Psalm and uh, making sure that I saw everyone in the office as son, sons and daughters of God. It was a very kind, gentle, friendly visit and I had a great calm that I usually don't have when I go to the dentist, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for our God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, my practitioner in this church. Thank you. Uh, this is Bruce, and... Uh... I guess it's been announced before that we have our Love is the Liberator magazine on our website, and the, the theme for this issue is the 23rd Psalm. I think I've always loved the 23rd Psalm. It's provided a, lot, a great source of comfort for me whenever I've read it. But there's one passage in that psalm that has meant a lot to me, and that is, He restoreth my soul. And as you can imagine, that's no small thing. But every time I read that one f simple phrase, it makes me very grateful for this church because I felt like since God brought me here to this church, my soul has been restored. And obviously, I've had so much in the way of reformation of character, which has been so beneficial. I have more confidence in good, less fear, and um, I have a happier and healthier life, more devotion for learning more about God and serving Him, and all these things are good, and they're all beneficial. But there's one thing in particular that has helped me immensely when I've run into trouble sometimes, which does happen. And that is, I ask myself, how would God look on this situation? because I found out that I've pretty much brought a lot of problems on myself by seeing the problems as problems instead of 
looking at circumstances the way God looks at them from that point of view. And every time I've stopped and really considered, well, what does God really see here? And it opens up a new vista on things, which is so much better. And I can feel something within me being restored. And I know it's happened to me many times when I've felt anxious, fearful, or others are pointing out things to me about how inadequate things are, and I've felt badly because of it. At times, I've stepped back and say, well, what does God really see here? And I know that he says that he sees me as being useful to him, even though I have much to learn as to what that means. But that simple view of things can be very helpful, and I highly recommend it. So this looking at things from God's standpoint gives you a new view on things, and for me it's been very helpful and restorative. I'm very grateful for all the blessings here. Yeah. <clears throat> Michelle from Canada. Canada. Go ahead. Oh, good evening. Recently, I had a dentist yeah. appointment. I go there for dental cleaning. They usually ask me if I want to have an examination by the dentist and an x-ray. Usually, I kindly decline this offer. They, they are, however, persistent. And this time, I said, okay, we'll do it. About three weeks before the appointment, I thought I should probably be conscious about what my substance is. I have to admit, however, I didn't study a whole lot about teeth or substance, but as I brushed my teeth just as Linda, I knew they are rooted in love. And my substance is God. Something that was mentioned in a round table. I also knew that in God, nothing can decay and that substance is eternal. When the thought came up during the day, I did the same and kept knowing all is well. The dentist was pleased with my teeth and the x-ray and said all looks well. From child on, I had trouble with my teeth. I can't remember a visit to a dentist where they didn't discover something that needed treatment. My teeth needed a lot of dental work done in the past. However, when Christian science came into my life, I didn't bother to go to the dentist anymore. And now, for 20 years, my teeth didn't need any dental work done besides the cleaning. This appointment now made me more aware of this fact. And this and that this is the working of God, good. I am forever grateful that this is so, and that also the dentist was able to see that all is well. Hallelujah. I am so grateful to Jesus Christ for his example, for Mary Baker Eddy, for making his teachings accessible for us today, for practitioner support, as well as for all that the Plainfield Christian Science Independent Church does. There are so many tidbits that help me apply Christian Science more than I did before I knew this church. Now, while I'm brushing my teeth, I always, or uh, most time, remember to think about my Divine substance. Have a good night. Thank you. 
Shardell. Hello, good evening. I offer my gratitude tonight in giving thanks to the Plainfield Church website. This website is a holy endeavor that is gigantic in scope, that is offered to the whole world in many different languages. The website is given much prayer, care, and consideration and is maintained through hours of dedication on a daily basis. Just reading the items on the carousel is enriching and healing, and then you can, t- can continue on to other articles, find information about the practitioners, announcements, schedules, and then articles you can listen to as well as testimonies, the children's website, and much more. Several people who have found the website remark about how helpful it is to them and have shared their feelings and findings. I personally visit the website every single day for inspiration, information, prayers, and guidance. My gratitude extends to the people working for God and for Mrs. Eddy's cause who work tirelessly to make our website possible. Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy from New Jersey, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you for the service this evening, for the beautiful readings and the music. I, too, wanted to express my gratitude for our website, for the abundance of the recorded material that is available to us, and my gratitude to all of those who make the recordings and make them available on the website to listen to. I really don't think there's been many days that I have not listened to multiple recordings. Uh, Whether working around the house or driving in the car, our textbooks, the wonderful articles by the early workers, our liberators, our hymns, and so much more are just always available to me to keep my thoughts uplifted. In the article, What Our Leader Says, Mrs. Eddy tells us to keep our minds so filled with truth and love that sin, disease, and death cannot enter them. It is plain that nothing can be added to the mind already full. I have found that one of the ways to achieve this is through listening to these recordings. They've been a tremendous resource to me as I strive to keep my thoughts stayed on God and my consciousness filled with the truth. We are given so much in this church to work with, to study, to listen, and to learn from, and I'm so very grateful. I'm very grateful for my practitioner's strong support, grateful to God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and to this beautiful church. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. Tonight, I'd like to give gratitude to God for his protection. Um, It was about this time of year, um, a few years ago, that uh, we had a storm, um, a severe storm, uh, one that we call a nor'easter out here in the northeast United States. Um, And it came with a lot of snow and heavy winds. Well, prior to the storm, everyone in the church was asked to watch and to pray that to handle the weather and pray that it not be destructive and that God's will be done. Well, everybody did pray. And um, that was at a time where my wife and I had just moved into a section of New Jersey that was more country and uh, was uh, was heavily forested with a lot of big beautiful trees uh, a section of New Jersey that's sometimes referred to as the last of the great eastern forest well uh, we moved into a house that had a steep hill right next to it and the steep hill had a lot of very large beautiful trees on it. 
And um, I mean, you know, some of them are like 100 feet tall. Um, and some of those trees are actually quite close to our house. So during the storm, as we were home praying and doing God's will, um, one of those very large trees actually fell down. One of the large trees close to our house fell down. Now, to put this in perspective, it didn't fall down the hill, because if it had, it would have landed right in the middle of our house. It fell at an unusual angle along the edge of the hill and missed our house. Now, there's no logical reason why it would fall in that direction instead of falling straight down the hill to our house, except that it was God's protection. And even though a couple of other trees in our yard came down, our house was totally unharmed. Everything continued to work, and we were able to continue to do our work. Um, so I'm so grateful. This was so clearly a case of God's protection for us. I'm so grateful to be part of this church. And we have such wonderful work to do here for God and mankind. I'm grateful to Mary Baker Eddy for her perseverance, for her love, for her inspiration, and for her willingness to give us the science that she discovered so that we can all benefit from it. And I want to thank Fairley for the fine readings tonight. It was beautiful. So it's so nice to be here with you all. Thank you. Lil. <clears throat> Thank you for the wonderful readings and the music. I recently had such a proof of God's ever presence. He's everywhere, and there's nothing that is impossible for him to do. In the neighborhood where I live, there were two power outages which didn't last very long. In both cases, all the power came back, including appliances, lights, everything except my clock radio, which I need for getting up in the morning. I have no instruction manual, so I turned totally to God for help. I kept praying to him to tell me how to fix the problem. <clears throat> There are many buttons on it to make it work. Only God could lead me. My first tests of the unit did not work. I asked again for his help, <clears throat> listening more carefully and thanking him. I was persistent, expecting all would work out, and thanking him continually. The next morning it worked waking me up. I kept thanking him for meeting this and every need. God is our best, our ever friend. Nothing is impossible for him. Thank you. Carol. I live in the same neighborhood, and uh, I'm very grateful that... Uh, it was, wasn't even during a storm. We would, it was just in the evening, two nights in a row, we heard a transformer pop, and everyone's lights went off except ours. Our lights stayed on. And I, I don't know any reason for it except that God's hand was on it. Um, I know I was uh, preparing for the church service the next day, and um, God protected the, the work and the what was going on. And uh, then the, um, the electric company came and they had to turn the electricity off for a larger area so that they could repair it. And, uh, then, and the power was back on in just a few minutes. Um, and that happened two nights in a row. 
I thought that was quite interesting and quite miraculous. <laughs> the power of God, what protection, and oh my goodness, it was. we were all so grateful for that and very grateful that it has now stayed on perfectly well since. Thank you. Thank you. Mary. Good evening. Um, let's see, I'll read. This is a, a letter from Vermont. Dearest friends, please accept the enclosed check as a token of our love for this church, which continues to bless our lives. I would not want to go back to the Christian science I knew before coming to Plainfield, because something just did not feel right. I thank God that he kept me going until my searching heart found the truth about Christian science and the movement through the Plainfield Christian Science Church independent website. I can say that the truth truly did set me free and transform my life, bringing me out of somewhat self-centered existence into one redirected toward blessing others, and that includes sharing Christian science in ways I was never able to do before. The ongoing teaching during the Sunday roundtables is very much appreciated and absolutely priceless. This truly is a wonderful church community. I thank all the members for their tireless effort in safeguarding Mrs. Eddy's true Christian science and sending it forth as the greatest gift to a waiting world, just as it found me. And then Holland, the Netherlands. Um, dear friends, I listen to and read most of the stuff you all make available. Your life is not hidden. Thank you, and God's blessings to you all. In South Dakota, thank you and the whole Plainfield Christian Science Independent Church members and friends. The Easter morning round table was, as always, a wonderful presentation of God's love and the truth as expressed by Christian science and faithful adherence. I've been so blessed by your outreach and faithful support of the Christ and the Comforter. Thank you, God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and the Plainfield Christian Science Church for your express love for all mankind. And then Missouri. On the heels of the Sunday, April 10th roundtable, during which the inspirational book entitled May's Boy was mentioned, I purchased a copy and have been hardly able to put it down. It is such an entirely uplifting true story of boundless mother love reflected by May and her constant prayers for her foster son, Leslie, which event eventually brought out his musical genius. May's incredible example of unself love blended with discipline is so needed today. I'm sharing this gem of a find with others and it is such a blessing to read. I just discovered several YouTube videos of Leslie performing, including one with his rendition of the Lord's Prayer, with May singing along in the background, which is very moving. And it turns out there is a sequel to the original book entitled May's Boy, The Rest of the Story, in case anyone else is interested. I can't wait to read it. I am always so grateful for the books and our movies that are mentioned at the roundtables and and or the Bible studies. During another roundtable some time ago, the set of 12 books written by a Christian scientist, Olive Rupre Miller, and called My Book House, was shared. Having no children of my own, I appreciated a good recommendation for my grandnieces and nephews and was thrilled to find a set in good condition to share with them. Thank you. And then this is <clears throat> in part uh, from Illinois. My prayer this morning was, Dear Father, my prayer for today is to be patient and wait expectantly, trusting knowing that only your perfect plan is unfolding. Nothing can change or interrupt this perfect plan. Your plan continues, uh, contains our daily bread and is full of blessings. Your will be done throughout this day. Thank you. And then Virginia, thank you for the April 13th testimony meeting. The beautiful readings with the theme Charity Heals 
is a wonderful reminder of, of the depth and allness of charity. Thank you for this reminder to dwell with 1 Corinthians 13 and imbibe the qualities of, ch of charity and of love. These qualities transcend all else. It reminds me of Jesus' beatitude, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And many thanks for each and every testimony, each one helpful and inspiring. <clears throat> and then this is an excerpt from Australia. Thank you, Plainfield Independent, for this priceless work of teaching and practicing pure Christian science. Thank you also for publishing all our early workers' writings. They are our saints, as was pointed out to me recently. So accurate is this term, saints, to describe any thinker who has applied Christian science in practical life and witnessed the Christ healing resulting. To those thinkers, our early workers, whose writings have been rescued by the private publishing efforts of Plainfield Independent, we are forever grateful. And dear Plainfield Independent, thank you for highlighting the work of Andrew Hartsook, also who has written of the truth of Christian science and shown with absolute clarity the importance of each individual to do their duty to, quote, God, to our leader, and to mankind, end quote. Thank you, Andrew Hartsook, for your sub sublime writings and your support of the truth. Thank you, Plainfield Independent, for featuring Andrew Hartsook's writing on the website. God is in the field. And then <clears throat> a testimony from Australia. Last week, my 10-year-old daughter was out with a friend doing some dancing when she fell on the side of her foot. She texted me to say she had had a crack, she had heard a crack, and she was concerned that she may have broken it. When she arrived home that evening, she was visibly uncomfortable. I told her she was perfect and God had been with her throughout the day and was with her now. I reminded her that accidents are not part of her experience or anyone's experience. She didn't talk too much about it the next day, although she was still hobbling around. But as she is a dancer, my husband thought it would be wise to take her to the doctor. He is a very loving and kind man and took a look at her foot and noticed it had a large bump on one side, and he said it should be wise to take her to get an x-ray. I asked our Plainfield practitioner to pray for us, and she reminded us of the hymn number 324, where it says, Take my feet and let them be, swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be, filled with messages from thee. As it was the Easter weekend, there weren't many places open, but the one which, uh, which was, was where we had been when I was pregnant with our daughter ten years ago. <clears throat> she told us then that there would be some complications with our baby, they suggested doing a rather risky procedure to check everything, to make sure everything was okay, which my husband and I decided not to do. <clears throat> and we asked a Christian science practitioner to pray for the rest of the pregnancy. Our daughter was born perfect. I told her this story before the Saturday's x-ray. I told her that she was perfect then and she is perfect now because she is the image and likeness of God. I saw the x-ray on the screen, and I could see no breakages. The doctor called me yesterday to confirm this. He said her foot is perfect. I am so grateful for God's support of us always in so many ways. This was just another example of how God continues to bless us. I am also grateful to Plainfield for giving my children Sunday school via a teleconference and for the wonderful practitioners and for everyone else at Plainfield who give so much in so many ways. Mrs. Eddy and Christ Jesus continue to lead us, keeping us close to God, for which I am so grateful. Thank you all, and have a good evening. And then the last uh, testimony from Hawaii. I would like to share a recent healing experience. While drawing the curtains a few mornings back, my sight was blinded suddenly by a kaleidoscope of colors and fragments. 
It was difficult for me to see and panic set in. I had the good God-given grace to call my practitioner at this church. I told her I was just trying to sit quietly, and she said to keep doing this and to know that I was in the presence of God and in, in his perfect embrace. Of course, Era tried to step in and plant seeds of stroke or something else equally menacing into my thoughts. My practitioner said to love God and man and focus on him without stopping. Within a half hour, all the symptoms disappeared. I am so grateful for this healing as my husband had returned home earlier and wanted to take me to the emergency room. I told him no, that I wanted to rely on Christian science support, and I'm so glad I did, as I learned that no matter the problem, big or small, it can be healed through Christian science. This experience has given me great encouragement to rely on God and God only and to know that he does indeed hear us. If support is needed, I am so lucky to know that it is available and immediate through this church. Daily I count my blessings that I am a part of this Plainfield worldwide family of practical and loving healers with much aloha and love. So I'm very grateful to be here tonight to be with you all to hear those beautiful readings on the pure in heart. Thank you for those. Um, and just a joy to be with you all. Thank you for the beautiful testimonies and the meetings. And we will go forth with joy and have a good night. Thank you.